there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we're in Waterford, Ireland. Beautiful sunny day to here in Ireland and yes there is sun in Ireland. It doesn't rain every single day and that's something you should know about coming here and that's why today's video is things you should know before you come to Ireland so you can have a better time when you come here because it is a great place. The food is actually pretty good, the people are fantastic and you've got beautiful sights and towns all over this great island okay and first off if we look at coming to ireland you've got a few big airports you can kind of fly into and if you're coming from europe if the u.s you have one and let's say and a half airports you can come into obviously dublin is the main airport you're going to fly into from the u.s and europe but there are other ones like cork and shannon you can get into and you can fly into belfast as well if you're looking at northern ireland so our flight from chicago was seven hours seven and a half hours from new york it's six and a half hours you know if you fly to shannon it's even less than that and the thing is, it's really easy to get here and it's really cheap to get here. And if you're in mainland Europe, you have the Ryanairs and the other airlines that come here that are super cheap and you can fly to Dublin or Shannon or you know, go to Cork. And that's what's really cool. And I'm going to tell you, if you're going to be renting a car when you come here, flying into Shannon or Cork is really nice because for me, the southwest part of Ireland and the west part of Ireland is the prettier part. It's more like just pass through Dublin and see that and then come back to over here. All right. Now, in terms of getting transportation around Ireland, there's buses that go everywhere. Public transportation in terms of buses will get you everywhere you want to go. Just maybe not in a timely manner. There are some trains, but they can be pricey, so I suggest staying with buses. But the one way you really want to get around Ireland and the way you're going to be able to go see a lot of the ruins and be able on your own timetable is to rent a car. This is vital coming to Ireland. And when you rent a car in Ireland, what you have to realize is they drive on the left side of the road, okay? And for my American friends and continental European friends, sometimes that's a little hard. You gotta remember, stay on the left, stay on the left. And there are all these roundabouts and things like that. Now, when you are driving here, what you need to know is the roads can be very narrow and the hedgerows can come right up. And you'll actually see where the side mirrors have taken out part of the branches and stuff like that on these hedgerows. So if you do feel uncomfortable, feel free to slow down. There's enough tourists that come here to Ireland that the Irish know that, oh, that's a tourist drive and they'll give you some space. They're not angry drivers here, so just have a heads up for that. I also do recommend you do have your to get a GPS when you do come here. It will make your life a lot easier. Oh, also, <laughs> when you rent cars here, this is more for the US travelers. The cars here that you rent are manual transmission. You have stick shift, you have to be able to do that. If you don't and you want to get an automatic car, it is going to cost you significantly more money and not every one of the car rental places actually has that. So just a heads up for that, all right? Now, in terms of accommodation when you are here, there are tons of hotels, there are tons of B&Bs when you are here, so you'll be okay finding accommodation. Obviously in high seasons like St. Patrick's Day in Dublin and things like that, you're going to need a book ahead. But what I recommend is if you're going to book ahead, look for the nice B&Bs to stay at or you can actually stay in some stately homes and, and castles and kind of stuff. It's really cool. So you can get those. So one issue I would have, I would say about accommodation here is if you're looking for parking, I mean parking is very limited here in Ireland, so finding parking can be troublesome. So make sure you look and see if your hotel has parking because the ones that do are usually the bigger hotels which are outside the center which sucks because then you have to come into town. Taxis aren't too expensive here so you can do that but it is frustrating if you want to stay in town but they're like where am I going to put my car so make sure you do ask about that. Now. In terms of inside your hotels, a lot of them will give you breakfast. You have your full Irish breakfast with the sausages and the black pudding and the white pudding and the eggs and the bacon and the fried tomatoes and fried, oh man, and the fried mushrooms and things like that. You will have those. Um, some places had as an, as an added extra, but you got to have it when you are here. Now, one of the things that I notice when I go to hotels around the world is I always look for the plugs. I've got to charge my cameras and my phones and tablets and, and computers and stuff like that. Um, what you need to know here is in Ireland, the plugs are not the circle European prongs or the US two flat ones. What it is is three flat ones. You got two flat ones on the bottom and then one like this. And one thing you want to look out for is some of the plugs, you actually have to flip a switch on the plug as well to get it to work. So just a heads up for that one. Now, in terms of safety, I've actually found Ireland very safe. Um, the only thing that's dangerous is when you're driving. <laughs> that's the only thing that might scare you. Otherwise, I find it very safe here. I mean, late night, just like anywhere, you know, always have a heads up, do pay attention. In Dublin, you might want to watch out for some pickpockets and stuff, but it's nothing really bad here. It is a pretty safe island and a very pretty safe country. So you're okay with that. Um, in terms of 
service. Service here in Ireland, the people are super friendly and super helpful. I mean, you're, you're trying to do a selfie, people will ask you, hey, you want me to take a picture for you instead, it'd be better. You know, the people are really outgoing. And when you go to the pubs and the restaurants and places, people are very helpful and friendly, but they're not over the top like in the US. They're more professional friendly and things like that with a good joke. Um, also with the service here, if you're going to the pubs and stuff, you don't tip there. If you go to a restaurant, they might add a service charge on there. Just ask and see if you need a tip or not. Most of the times you don't though, because it's usually included or it's just not something you do like at the pub. Um, other things you might want to think about when you are coming here is where are you going to go? For me, if you're going to stay, if you're going to go to Ireland, you know, you're probably going to fly into Dublin. Then from Dublin, I say go over to Galway, and Galway is just gorgeous there. It's a fun place to go and listen to music and party and stuff like that. Then go down the coast, go south on the coast, and you go to places, you go to the Barrens, and go, you go to the Barren, and then you go to the Cliffs of Moher, and then you get down to, you know, the Dingle Peninsula, you can see that, and then you get down to Killarney, and Killarney could be a good base to go see the Ring of Kerry, a beautiful road where you're going on the, on the, how do I say this? Along the coast, it's just gorgeous there. And from down there, you can go to Cork. Now, Cork, I'm not a big fan of personally, but there's some stuff by Cork that's really worth seeing. Go and stay in Kinsale, this beautiful seaside town to check out. You go to the Blarney Castle in Blarney, which is like 20 minutes, 30 minutes outside of Cork, to lay back and take kiss the Blarney Stone. So that's cool. And then you can head up. I mean, we're in Waterford now. You could go there or you could go up to Kilkenny, which is actually one of my favorite small towns here in Ireland. You can go there and see the castle and stuff like that and then head up to Dublin. And the thing is, when you go around Ireland, there's a lot more options up there. I mean, you could go into the north and you go to Belfast. But for me, the coolest thing about going to Northern Ireland is going to going to Giant's Causeway, these crazy hexagon, hexagon rocks coming out of the ground. It looks like something crazy, like there's no way this is, this is a real world kind of stuff. And that's one thing you can do. So those are my favorite places to go but the thing is when you go around Ireland you're gonna see tons of ruins like castle ruins but also Neolithic ruins you know these things are like the Druids almost and things you know you're seeing these things like this is crazy when was this built oh this is from when they built the the pyramids they were building this here in Ireland you're like wow you do have those things here so do check those things out and that's why when you rent a car you can go see those things if you're using public transport it's a lot more complicated but if you don't want to there are tons of tours here you can book them before you come or when you're here you can sign up for day trips that will take you on tours to go see a bunch of things out there so you will be okay now in terms of pricing here I found Ireland is it's I mean it's not super it's not cheap okay it's 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 a fair price place I found the price is similar to the US maybe a little bit more expensive than the US for example a, a kind of a middle-class hotel I, we were spending about 100 from 110 to 150 euros a night kind of things and we're but we're here at the end of high season so that's not too bad it's like the price I'd pay for a hotel in the US going to restaurants my usual meal like a fish and chips or um, your, your Irish stew well your Irish stew is a little bit your Irish stew is you know, about 10 10 euros a little bit less a little bit more um, your fish and chips about you know 10 to 13 um, if you're gonna get a nicer fish dish it's gonna be in the higher teens you go to a nicer restaurant obviously the price doesn't go higher but the prices aren't that bad here. I mean, it's like if you're going out to eat in the U.S. So it's not a really expensive trip. And that's what's cool is getting here is really cheap. The flights from the U.S. and the flights from Europe to Ireland are really affordable. So for us, my buddy and I were trying to decide, do we go for, you know, a week to France or do a week in Ireland? And I looked at it and I'm like, wow. For the price of my ticket to Paris, I can fly to Ireland and pay for all my hotel rooms for that same amount of time. So that's one of the things that's really kind of cool. Another thing with the price, and you might want to know what you need to pay with, look, here in the Republic of Ireland, they use the Euro, okay? In Northern Ireland, they use the Pound, so you do have those two different things. Both places have, you know, there's, there's ATMs all over the place, so you'll be okay there. In the smaller villages, sometimes it can be an issue, but you'll be okay because you can pay with credit card lots of places, and since there's a lot of U.S tourists that come here. I've actually seen even my American Express has accepted a lot of places, so that's really helpful. Now, since you have the money, you might want to ask yourself, well, where am I, when am I going to spend this or how do I spend this? One of the things you want to look at are the hours where stores are open, and it does depend, but in general, think like 10 to 6 stores are open, so do your shopping then. In the evening, really, the downtown's like close, like it closes down and it's almost empty until people start filtering out to go to restaurants and bars. And that might get you thinking is, what am I going to do for fun in the evening? Look, you've got to go to the pubs here in Ireland. Irish pubs, there's a reason why we have them all over the world, because they're so fun and you're going to love drinking Guinness and Smithics and Murphy's and things like that and the whiskey.
because it tastes so much better here than anywhere else in the world, especially Guinness and Smithix. I mean, you're just like, my God, am I drinking something different? It is really a fantastic thing. So definitely hit the pubs. But for me, one of the best parts of going to the pubs at night is the live music. I mean, Ireland is full of musicians and full of music, and you're gonna have, if you get Irish music or just rock music or whatever kind of music, you'll have that. So make sure you look for the live music, you know, on the weekend, especially on the weekend. Sometimes you'll find places during the weekdays, especially in like a Dublin or a Galway, because they're such big cities with lots of tourists. But even in places like Waterford or, or Kinsale, we were last night, there was music at seven o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, but a lot of them started at 10. So there was that. So definitely get to the pubs and have a good time there. Now, another thing people might want to ask about is like, you know, what do they speak in Ireland? Well, they speak English here, okay? Yes, there's there's Irish or Gaelic or however you want to say it, but you know, people, you'll, there's some TV channels that'll have that, but don't worry, you'll be fine with English. But the thing is, is you might have a tough time understanding them sometimes, because sometimes the Irish accent can be a bit difficult for foreigners. I mean, if you're in Dublin, you'll be fine, but if you're going out to smaller villages, sometimes it can be an issue. But when they realize you're not from there, you'll be fine. They'll, they'll talk to you normally. You'll be okay with that. But just a heads up, if you, you don't understand things sometimes, it's okay to say, man dude I, I'm sorry I didn't catch you there they're glad to talk back with you it's fine and that's what's cool is that people are so friendly they're going to share a lot of information with you so when you're looking for good restaurants and pubs and stuff ask the locals they'll gladly tell you no problem all right and then I guess we should talk about when you should come look the best time to come to Ireland is probably June mid mid June through mid September I mean it's because the weather's nice I'm, I'm here now and it's sunny and beautiful. And the thing is, is, it doesn't rain all the time in Ireland. Yes, it rains a lot in Ireland and there will be sprinkles there. So make sure you have a jumper or you bring a jacket with you, even if it's the summer. In the winter time, it doesn't get that cold. I mean, yes, it can snow occasionally, but it doesn't get super freezing, freezing cold, but it can be quite chilly. So always bring layers when you are here because you'll be surprised. You'll start off in the morning thinking, oh, I need jeans and this sweatshirt. But now it's noontime and I'm like, man, I need to take this off and just wear my t-shirt around here. So that's one of the things that's cool, okay? Anyway, I think that covered most of the stuff I want to talk about to give you some ideas about what you should know before you come to Ireland. I hope it helped you out. If you want to learn more, maybe the don'ts of visiting Ireland or things that'll shock you when you come to Ireland, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions. And if you want to learn more, do click that subscribe button. We put out two travel videos every week, every Wednesday and Saturday. So make sure you look for those on your YouTube feed so you can watch them there. Or we also post them on our Facebook and our Twitter feeds and stuff like that. So I'll say bye from Ireland and have a great time because the Emerald Isle is fantastic. And no, you will not see any leprechauns except in the toy form, all right? Just FYI, all right? So bye and good luck kissing the Blarney Stone. Oh, another thing I should tell you is um, if you're going to go to some of these ruins and the historic uh, castles and stuff, be ready for really windy staircases that can be a little dangerous so if you're you get a little claustrophobic just be prepared all right so bye from Ireland <laughs>